Research has linked five running traits with injuries such as knee pain, ITB syndrome, stress fractures, and other serious injuries. But if any of these traits are lurking within your technique, the good news is you can eradicate them with just one simple strategy. More on that later. The first trait uncovered by research is an overstride. And I wanted to start off with this one just so we can get one thing straight. I'm not saying heel striking is bad. In fact, heel striking is perfectly safe, but if you do elicit a heel strike, it is safer to make contact closer to your center of mass. This is because contacting with an overstride generates an unnecessary braking force and disrupts your forward momentum. Imagine cruising down the highway thinking everything is going well, but not realizing you've left the handbrake on. That's what's happening when you overstride. In fact, this paper clearly highlights that the body really doesn't like these braking forces. They bundled 74 healthy runners into three tiered groups, representing those who recorded the highest, the lowest, and the middle value braking forces. When they did this, they found five times the amount of injuries in tier two and eight times the amount of injuries in tier three when comparing this with tier one. That is massive. Also a quick note, this same paper found no difference between injury rates and foot strike. So again, some reassurance that heel striking is perfectly safe. You also don't need this high tech setup or fancy running assessment to figure out if you have these traits. All you need is a treadmill and a smartphone with a slow-mo function. Just film yourself for 10 seconds from the side and from behind. Okay, on to trait number two. This trait is observed from behind and is a combination of a hip drop and the knee caving in. This systematic review found that those with this style of running had an increased risk of developing runner's knee and ITB syndrome. Another paper from Chris Brammer looked at the traits of injured versus non-injured runners and found that for every one degree increase in pelvic drop, there was an 80% increase in the odds of someone being classified as injured. If you believe you have any of these traits, remember there's one simple solution, which I'll explain at the end, but we still have three traits to go. Number three is something you may have heard me talk about before, and this is your step width referring to the foot contact in relation to the midline when observing your running from behind. Research shows that the more narrow your step width, the more ITB strain is accumulated, leading to ITB syndrome. Also personally from me treating runners, I've seen a high rate of tibialis posterior tendon pain, shin splints, and lateral hip pain when a runner shows a narrow or a crossover step width. For trait number four, Check out this fascinating paper, which had 166 runners run with real-time visual feedback on their impact forces, effectively learning how to contact the ground with a reduced impact peak. After two weeks of this type of training, they then went out and ran in the real world and were observed for 12 months. After 12 months, when compared to a control group of 154 runners, the gait retraining group had an injury reduction of 62%. To point more evidence towards this trait, this paper found that when running fatigued, those who have a history of stress fractures also have a higher vertical ground reaction force compared to runners without a history of stress fractures. But before you think, but Brody, how can I calculate my ground reaction forces when I'm running fatigued? Allow me to help you out because trait number five is closely linked to trait number four and is something more practical. Trait number five is runners who have an increased sound on impact, particularly when running fatigued. It can be difficult to maintain an efficient stride when you are running really tired and your form can become quite sloppy. This can increase your loading rates and increase your risk of injury. But this paper found that runners who were running fatigued and given the verbal cue to run with the lowest impact sound possible, they were able to avoid these steady rises in forces. So remember this for your next long run. Keep just as quiet on your feet as when you started. 
Now, before I get into how you can correct all these with one simple adjustment, trust me, it's magic. It is very important that I tell you that while these five traits may increase the likelihood of injury, the factor that trumps all of these is doing too much too soon. In other words, you can have all of these traits that we've just discussed and not get injured if you are training sensibly and recovering adequately. Conversely, you can have a flawless, perfect running technique and still get injured by increasing your mileage too quickly or just making stupid training decisions that we've all been guilty of in the past. Okay, the one piece of magic I recommend if you want all these unhelpful traits to disappear is to find your optimal running cadence, which is a fancy term indicating how many steps you take per minute. Now finding out your optimal cadence is tricky. I'll get to that shortly. But firstly, let me share why this is so important. For instance, if your running cadence is below optimal, you are taking slower, larger steps. But correcting this by taking shorter, faster steps while traveling at the same speed will mean you don't have enough time to reach out in front of the body or across the midline, effectively eradicating an overstride and a crossover pattern. Next, increasing your cadence has been shown to increase muscle activation around your hips, reducing any unhelpful wobbles that may be present at the hip and the knee. And lastly, since you're taking shorter steps, your up and down amplitude reduces, meaning less ground impact and a softer, quieter footfall. So if you're still scratching your head and unsure of how to measure your cadence, how to effectively increase your cadence, or if you're unsure on what your optimal cadence is, and if you've read that everyone should run at 180 cadence, think again, then check out this video I created, which will cover all of these topics. Go on, click on it now before it's too late.